Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai and today we're going to be repotting a Nagasaki crab apple. Alright, so this is the tree that we're going to be working on here today and this tree was given to me by a bonsai artist in Belfast called Phil Donnelly and it was given to me back whenever I was filming a documentary about bonsai and Phil was featuring in that to talk a little bit about some of his trees and the things that he does with bonsai and as I was at Phil's house I was just about to leave and he was like oh hold on a second and he ended up coming out with a few trees for me and my friend and this is the one that he gave me so Right off the bat, the tree is beautifully planted in a pond basket, which we all know creates really good root development as it allows lots of oxygen into the roots. The tree is just about starting to come into leaf. It's got buds all up the trunk that are just ready to open also. So now that the energy has moved up the tree and that it's spring, it's a good time to repot. Although if you do repot in early spring, late winter, do be careful in case you get another freeze. It can happen sometimes, and if it does, it could just end up killing your tree if it isn't protected enough from the frost. But nevertheless, I have now deemed it to be spring here, so I'm okay to start repotting everything. Now I can see with this tree already, it's got beautiful movement of the trunk. Last year, I pruned this tree for taper, pruned off a big branch in this area here. As you can see, the cut putty is still sort of on there and it's starting to heal over. But it's really good because on this section of the trunk, it goes from thick to thinner. At the top here, it's got this sort of ugly scar that I don't like so much. I really hope it heals over, but I feel like I'm gonna have to cut to a lower branch in time. And whenever I first got this tree, I ended up taking an air layering from it. I believe I still have that air layering. I think this is the air layering that I took from it, although this could also be a cutting as it's so thin. So the tools that I'm going to be using for this repot today are a root rake or a bent fork, a chopstick, and a pair of root pruning shears. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take this out of the pot. I'm going to be very careful when grabbing the trunk so that I don't damage any of the new shoots growing. Ideally, you'd want to repot a crab apple every year just so the roots don't get too compact. All right. And Phil has got this in some really nice bonsai soil, so I think this repot is going to be pretty easy. So I'm just going to start by raking away any of the old soil with a chopstick. And I think the soil mix that he has it in is a mix of pumice, lava rock, maybe some fine grit, and this red stuff here is fired akadama so that it doesn't break down as easily. And as I rake here like this, I'm always working away from the trunk of the tree. Never do I want to rake across the ways like this, always away from the trunk. I can just rotate the tree as I work on it. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot. If you don't want to use a chopstick and you have a root hook, by all means use that. I got one recently, I completely forgot I owned one. This is what it looks like here. Wooden handle with just a metal hook. Same idea as a chopstick, but I guess it's more ergonomic from working on the roots like this. Oh wow, this is cool. So much easier. Okay, I quite like this tool compared to the chopstick. My wrists and fingers will thank me. This tool wasn't very expensive either. I see this as a tool that's gonna last me for the rest of my bonsai journey, probably my whole life. I'm gonna tilt the tree and I can see there's a nice healthy mat of roots. And this is a sign that it's starting to get pot bound because the roots are winding around and around. I'm just gonna cut this bottom mat off with these root printing shears. This part here is just so compact that if I were to rake it off, I would be disposing of this section of root anyways. Is it gonna come off as a square? Check it out, that's the little square of roots that came off. So from here, I'm not gonna remove any more root. All I would like to do is loosen the soil and untangle the roots. And I'm not sure if this tree was an air layering off a larger tree, or is it grown from seed? I suppose I would have to ask Phil. I think it's really interesting working on a tree that someone else has worked on because you can sort of uncover things 
and see the ways that people do things differently from you. For example, as I dig through this, I can see that there is like little yellow pellets through the soil mix, which is a fertilizer for the tree. So I guess even if you forget to fertilize the tree, you can always rely on them little pellets breaking down over time. I can see here there's lots of roots in the middle of this, which I know I will not need over time. So I'm just gonna cut them off here. Remember to keep a spray bottle of water nearby if you're repotting a tree. That way you can just mist the roots so that they don't dry out. And if the roots do dry out on your tree, especially the little fine ones, then they could die off. So you wanna always keep the roots nice and moist as you work on it. And just in case you're new to bonsai, repotting a tree like this significantly improves the overall health of the tree, provided you do it at the correct time of year and the tree is strong enough to handle a repot. But repotting a tree like this stops it becoming pot bound, which is when there's too many roots in the pot and the tree struggles to breathe through the roots. And removing any thick unwanted roots also provides space for nice thin fibrous roots to grow into that space. I know some people can look at what I'm doing to a tree like this and be like, ah, oh, you're mutilating the tree, it's not good for the tree. But rest assured, it will not harm the tree. So I have loosened up quite a lot of soil. It's still got some soil on the inner parts of the root ball here. Now we're gonna go in and decide which roots to keep and which ones to get rid of. So before I look at the underside of the root ball, I first wanna look at the top here. And I really would like for the base or the nibari of this tree to flare outwards on one root plane. And as I can see here already, although this exposed root could be used for something, could be quite nice. Maybe even a root over rock. I just don't like how high up this particular root is on the tree. And since there isn't much fibrous roots attached to this, I can cut that off. So is that one gone. There's another one here, it's quite high up and it's quite weak. You can see it's starting to rot here. So we can get rid of this one. And I quite like how all the roots on this plane spread out evenly. So I think I'm gonna have here as the nibari of the tree. This one is also too high. This root here is growing in a strange direction. It's growing straight down, but it's also quite high compared to this nice root plane that I want to establish. So let's get rid of that. So I might need to develop new roots in this area for a nice nibari in the future. This isn't something that's gonna look instantly good. It can take many years to develop a nice root flare on a tree. But now that I've removed roots here, I'm just gonna rake away with the chopstick to see what else I can find because I can see a really thick root here. But I would just like to find out where does it come from and how much is attached to it to see if I can get rid of it. It kind of winds back that way, if you can see that. Let's see if I can pull this and pry and pull and see where I can find where it comes from. So that's it here. Way too thick to be a part of a nice nibari. Very flexible too. Can I bend it around? I don't think so. Let's get rid of it. Some roots attached to that, no big deal. I really see root work as just as important as working on the top of trees. And I like to make every repot that I do really count so that the tree is as far along as it can be with each and every repot. So I don't wanna waste the opportunity of just putting this into soil as is. I really wanna sort out the roots and take away any problems that I may have in the future. Like this one here, this is a big thick root that loops back on itself. Could be a tap root, but at one stage, this was a thin root going this way, but thickened over time. And I think this is gonna to have to go also. Ideally, I'd like the very bottom of this tree to be completely flat, but at the same time, you don't wanna rush a tree too far. Maybe you could take a few off now, two years later, take the rest off. I'm in no rush, but I just like to be as efficient here. Okay, so I don't think there is many roots attached to this big thick one. I'm gonna use a pair of branch cutters on this. These are an old pair of branch cutters that I don't really mind if I blunt them, but if you have root cutters, I definitely advise them. I've got a pair on the way. There's also this one that can be a little bit shorter because that kind of winds around. So here we go with a big cut on this one. So look at the much there is here. This winds right around. You see how that like goes in a circle? That's where it winded around. And if I had left this any longer, all this here would thicken. And if you leave it really long enough, all this will start to strangle the roots. So it's good that we got this away. I think I could probably take this root flare down even lower and expose more of the trunk. Cause we've got a good lot of roots down here that I can work with. Now I feel like these ones up here 
are just taken away from that. I'm going to start by just cutting here. This root is a little bit strange as it crosses over. I think I can get rid of this one. It's very thick and it's winding at that. That's all I would like to do for today. I don't want to push this tree too far and the root ball is getting quite small from what we started with. But because there's lots of energy in the trunk now, it's okay to remove this much at this time. And I can actually see now the nice root flare at the base here as it comes down. That's what I was looking for, it just thickens. And if I turn this around on the underside, it is really nice and flat. So at this stage of the repot, we now have two options to put it into a large pot again so that it will take another couple of years to fill the pot, grow lots of nice radial roots to develop the nabari, or we could stick it into a little pot like this and call it a day. Now it can be extremely tempting to put it into a pot like this because it looks so good, it looks like a little bonsai. But by putting it into a little pot like this, we'll slow down the progression of the tree and make it a lot more difficult to get a nice wide nibari on the base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back into the same pond basket it was in because I don't quite see this tree as finished in any way. So I don't really care about it looking like a bonsai in a little tiny pot. I care more now about the health of the tree and how quick I can develop it. Because maybe in another five years time, I can then put it into a smaller pot whilst it has that nice surface roots and it will look so much better. It's all about patience. In bonsai, some things can look a little bit worse, a little bit silly with a big shoot going off somewhere before they look really beautiful. The wire that I'm gonna be using to wire this into the pot is one and a half millimeter. And the tools that we're gonna be using to do this are some gin pliers and wire cutters, of course. So I'm gonna first measure the wire in the pot like this. I'm gonna put the first piece through so that it's long enough. Press it down here so that it creates a nice right angle. And here it can be quite tricky to try and get it in this way and stuff like that. So to make it as clean as possible, I'm just gonna hold it with my finger here and bend it at a right angle. Just like that. Nice and clean. So I've got wire going across this way and across that way. And the soil mix that I'm going to be using today is a mix of pumice, academa, and lava rock. So I'm beginning to just place the tree in to see how it's gonna sit in the pot. I don't want to have the tree fully to the top. I'd like to bury the nibari a little bit so that it can thicken. I'm also adding in some sphagnum moss. This promotes lots of healthy roots. It's antifungal and antibacterial. It also acts as a little safety net. You know, if you go a few days without watering, the sphagnum will keep lots of nice moisture around them roots. So I'm gonna place this right on top here. Make sure as you place it down, all the roots are nice and fanned out radially. Really take your time with it so that you do it right. And now I'm gonna come across with the wire. I'm gonna go around the trunk, wire it to the adjacent wire. Same with this one, across, making sure that I'm not crushing any roots. Then wire it to this other wire. And of course it's important you don't want to leave this wire on too long as it will start to bite into the trunk and you'll get nasty scars that you don't want there. I'm just going to tighten this enough and it holds it in place and just around these little roots now I'm going to cover a little bit more sphagnum and this should make the tree very happy. And you can just take a chopstick then and work the soil in just to get rid of any air gaps that may be there so that when this is watered, the water penetrates through all of the soil evenly and it can reach all of the roots. Be very gentle here as you stab the roots because you don't want to end up ripping through the roots that you've fanned out ever so nicely. I don't want to pile the soil level up too high. If I pile the soil up, the tree could start then sending roots out here because there's a lot of moisture in that area and that's not something I would like. They want the tree to put all its energy into developing this nice nibari under this. I'm not going to do any work to the top of this tree today. That's enough for now. And then as this tree leaves out, starts producing more roots, that's when we can then come in and get some wire on this. But I don't want to do too much work at the one time. But all that's left to do now is to give this tree a water.
I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please leave a like. It really helps out the channel and the YouTube algorithm. Let me know what you thought of my repot. Would you do anything differently? Also remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get updates from whenever I upload a video or if a video is premiering and you guys would like to chat with me there and then in the chat box. And if you'd like to stay updated on all the bonsai related things that I do off camera, please follow me on Instagram. It's at Notion Bonsai. But on that, thank you so very much for watching. Thank you.